Mike Meyer from Mike Meyer Inc. and I'm here to talk to you today about our new mod leaf springs for the 1964 through 1973 Mustang. All right, so one of the things that we've been running into is a lot of these manufacturers out there are selling leaf springs that are circa 1975. They really haven't changed their designs in forever and a lot of the generic Mustang crowd out there doesn't know that they're buying something completely antique. And then when they get it on their car, they pass it off as, hey, this is my 50 year old car and it's just the way they ride. Well, that's not true. Couldn't be further from the truth. There is still good development out there on these old leaf springs and we're doing it here at Mike Meyer Inc. So let us tell you about it. So one of the major problems with leaf springs is wheel hop. We all know about that. You let the clutch out, you stand on the gas, the rear axle jumps all over the place. It's crazy. What that is, one of the parts of that problem is the front half of the leaf spring, when you accelerate, wants to bow up because there is a lack of strength in the front half of that leaf spring. What we do is we load the front half of that leaf spring with all the leaves plus extra two extra leaves. You can see here the front half of the leaf is really stout. We also clamp it together with a solid quarter inch thick strap. It's a beefy leaf that can take a lot of power. We've got guys running 900 horse out there still able to contain uh, this leaf under the car. It's really, really great. So when you accelerate, now that we've got all this meat here, it doesn't want to wrap up nearly as bad. So that's a great attribute. The other thing that happens with leaf springs is we start putting all sorts of components on the car and the ride quality goes down the drain. Well, let's talk about ride quality and what makes it. A leaf spring, a leaf spring does not move just straight up and down underneath the car. A lot of people put these hard Delrin and aluminum bushings in there, and we used to as well, or I used to as well back in the day. Well, what I learned was the leaf spring doesn't move straight up and down. The rear housing wants to articulate under the body. When the body goes into a turn, it wants to roll, and the leaf spring wants to roll with it. So that means that the bushings and everything have to twist. If they don't, they'll progressively bind up, and as you get the car further into the turn, and then say you hit a bump in the middle of the turn, the spring rate spikes because it's binding. It's not physically moving fluid. So what we want to do is we want to allow the spring to be as linear in spring rate as possible. You're not going to solve it all, but we can make it a lot better. We figured out through a lot of testing, or I figured out through a lot of testing, that the soft stock rubber shackle kit was the best. It kind of sounds contrary, whether you're hardcore racing or you're um, just cruising on the street, this bushing is so soft that it allows the leaf spring to twist and articulate under the car, reducing what I would call roll bind. So now what we've got going on, we've freed up the movement of the spring, we've allowed it to roll, you can hit a bump in the middle of the turn and it doesn't shutter the car off of that turn. So we choose a rubber shackle kit, or excuse me, rubber shackle kit in the back but under hard acceleration, we still need to run a urethane bushing. The, the front eyelet is still what it pushes and pulls the car during acceleration and deceleration. So we still need some control, some, some, some sort of stout control. By using the urethane, it still has a soft compliant lip, which does allow some movement. So we're compromising on this one a little bit, but it works really good. It's an inexpensive way to do it, and it really, really does a good job. Now, the next thing is we choose ride height very specifically. We set up our ride height and we measure from the pinch weld underneath the rocker panel. We, we've chosen on the 67 Mustang and the 65s. We really like to have the car right around eight inches from that little pinch weld in front of the rear wheel under the rocker panel. We want to have that guy right about eight inches. It can vary a bit depending upon tire diameter, but that sets the suspension geometry in a good place. It is a lowered uh, ride height. It's not some four wheel drive ride height. And you can go on our site and take a look at cars and stuff that we've done. Uh, but geometry is really important to ride quality and characteristics of the car. The other little secret tip, tip I'm gonna leave you with today is our rear rebound hanger here. Right there. It's a clamp, it's a rebound clamp. So what this does, we run this clamp now. It's a loose fit clamp. It lets the back half of the leaf open up when you accelerate. So when the front wants to bow, the back actually wants to open up. This lets that leaf spring actually lift the car during acceleration, and it really gives you good forward bite. So with all these tech tips, look into our leaf spring. Go to MikeMeyerInc.com. Go to our website, our Facebook page, 
and also to locate that rear and housing side to side now that we're running this rubber bushing we do use a panter glide kit you can look at that video on our website and it helps to pull this all together to make your car a wonderfully handling car so again thanks for tuning in enjoy and we look to see you out on the weekend somewhere